Hello, my name is Dr. Raj Dandekar and uh, today we are going to learn about ridge regression. In the previous lecture, we looked at uh, ordinary least squares method, but we did not add a regularization term to it. Today we are going to see uh, what does it mean to add a regularization term to the ordinary least square solution. And more importantly, how does it solve two main problems which are encountered in the regression without regularization? Towards the end, we will also see why is it called as ridge regression. This is rarely explained in many courses, but in fact, there is a very nice and a beautiful visualization to this name. And there is a very strong reason as to why this name exists in the first place. So we'll also take a look at that towards the end. So let's get started. First of all, uh, I would like to have a small recap of the theta optimal or the theta star which we obtained in the regression without regularization. And uh, it was given by this particular formula. If you have not seen the regression, the OLS lecture which was done in the previous class, I would highly encourage you to go through that um, because then understanding this particular lecture will be so much more easier. So here, as I noted before, we did not do regularization. So I mentioned about solving these two problems, right? The first problem uh, is going to be, what if the inverse of W transpose W does not exist. What will we do in this case? This formula is completely based on taking this inverse, right? But what if the inverse does not exist in the first place? Uh, how do we proceed then? That's the first major problem. And uh, the second major problem is of course, uh, overfitting. And both of these problems will be solved if we use regularization, especially rigid regression. So essentially we are kind of killing two birds with the same stone. Um, it's a beautiful solution to both of these problems. So uh, let's start looking at ridge regression in the first place. It's actually very similar to regression, which is uh, regularization, which we saw in classification. So ridge regression simply looks like this. So the objective function I'm going to call as J ridge. It will again depend on theta and theta naught. So th you can think of this as the slope and you can think of this as the offset. And uh, the objective term will be equal to the average of, this is I, the average of the squared loss function And I'm now going to add one more term here. In fact, this is the regularization term. This is the regularization term. It's exactly similar to the term which we added for classification, if you recall, where lambda is a hyperparameter and it's a constant. And in vector form, this is magnitude of theta whole square, which can also be written in vector form as theta transpose into theta. Uh, now, one small distinction which I would like to point out here is that when we add the regularization term, we are not including the offset here. In particular, what this means is that, as we also saw in classification, this regularization term adding it means that we want to keep the magnitude of theta smaller. Uh, so in particular, we are penalizing the slope if it's too large. So theta is the slope and remember uh, theta naught is the offset. So let's say if these are my data points. Uh, 
and I want to find the regression line among these data points. Let's say uh, this is the first version of the line. Now, if I take a line with a higher slope, let's say which looks something like this, ridge regression will penalize this. So this will be penalized. And by penalized, I mean that if the slope is higher, this quantity will also be higher, which means the loss function or the objective function will be higher. So which we don't want. We want this J or the objective function to be as low as possible, which implies that we want the theta or the slope to be as close to horizontal as possible. And there is a reason why we do that. We saw that reason in the classification case also. The reason why we want the slope or the parameters to be small in magnitude is that we don't want our final answer to capture the noise. If there is noise in the data, we don't want to capture that. And having smaller parameters or having smaller slope ensures that the noise is not captured. A general rule to remember is that if the parameter values are too high, it means that our hypothesis has started to behave like crazy and it is starting to capture noise. So we should be careful in such a scenario. Ridge regression or regularization allows us or prevents theta from becoming too high in magnitude and keeps the slope low. The second thing what we are saying is that let's say if this was the original line, right? This, this line. This was the original line and I told you that if it's rotated, we will penalize it. But essentially what we are saying is that if I add an offset to this line, which means that if I keep the slope of this line same, but I change the theta naught. So let's say consider the blue line, which I'm calling O and consider L1 and L2. So O line O line L1 and line L2 have the same same slope. So I have the same theta, but they have different theta naught. We are not going to penalize that. It's totally fine for us how much our offset is there. We don't want to penalize the offset. In the ridge regression, what is only penalized is the slope. The offset actually does not matter too much because whether we increase or decrease the offset, it does not mean we are capturing the noise or not capturing the noise. What is more important is to penalize the slope. So one small distinction which I would like to note here and this may be asked in interviews because it's a minor point that in the ridge regression, we penalize the slope and not the offset. If we are penalizing the offset, then there would have been one more term here, lambda into theta naught square or something like that. But we don't add that because it's fine to have the offset. We are just going to penalize an increase in slope. In the lecture on classification, we saw the physical meaning or the intuition behind this regularization term. It really helps us to keep the magnitude of theta small. And today we are going to see a hands-on example of how this works in practice and how it prevents overfitting, how it prevents us from capturing the noise in the training data also. Before coming to that, I just want to uh, write the mathematical version of this. Uh, so. We looked at last time minimizing minimizing j of theta without the ridge regression gave us this particular formula for gradient of j. Gradient of j was 2 by n w transpose w theta minus t. Now if you take the gradient of this just one more term would be added. You already must have guessed that and if you take so it would be an added derivative. So if you take the derivative of this, it will be 2 lambda theta. So gradient of J ridge, which is the ridge regression objective function is the first term is actually exactly similar because it does not change this squared loss W theta minus T, but we add another term, which is 2 lambda theta. Remember that the dimensions of everything here are d by 1 and d by 1. So for the sake of simplicity here, I am not considering theta naught because optimizing j ridge with theta naught turns out to be difficult. And I want to present to you with a simple formula here. So I am just looking at theta right now for the sake of simplicity. We also saw that uh, theta star in the normal case without ridge regression is w transpose w inverse 
W transpose T. It turns out that to find theta ridge star, which is the optimal theta in the ridge regression, you just need to set this quantity to zero uh, because we are going to set the gradient to zero. So it turns out that theta star actually has this uh, representation in, in case of ridge regression. So, so I'm calling this as theta star ridge and uh, this looks like W transpose W plus N lambda I inverse W transpose T. So what this actually means is that if my W transpose W is a square matrix and it looks something like this 1, 2, 2, 4. Adding lambda times I means just adding plus lambda times adding or strengthening the diagonal terms. So then this will be 1 plus lambda, 2, 2 and 4 plus lambda. So the dimensions of this vector are same as W transpose W. The dimensions of this are same as W transpose W. But we are adding a lambda term to the uh, diagonals. Now what many people think is that this is called as ridge because we are strengthening the diagonal terms. And in a way it's good to think like that. But there is a much better visual explanation to why it is called as ridge, ridge regression formula in the first place. Even in the MIT course, it said that if you add a lambda to the diagonal term, it's called a, that's why it's called as ridge regression. And in the MIT course, they do not explain the visual meaning for why it is called as ridge regression in the first place. Uh, we will be coming towards that to the end of this lecture. So please watch till the end. Uh, so as I mentioned, this formula is going to solve two things for us. This formula is going to solve two things for us. One is that it's going to reduce overfitting or rather it will prevent us from capturing noise in the data. And the second is that it's going to take care of the invertible problem. So what if W transpose W is not invertible in the first place. We will see how addition of this lambda I takes care of the non-invertible problem. So first let's look at how ridge regression helps us to prevent overfitting or helps us to prevent us from capturing noise. Let's look at this and for the purposes of demonstration uh, I'm going to take this example where we have so this is our data set let's say i have these lines and then i have three outliers this is my data set okay uh, when i prescribe the data set i know that these three points are just noise what we are going to do in python now is that we are going to run two cases first is we are going to run uh, the ols without ridge and second secondly we are going to run OLS with ridge now before we move to the python demo I want all of you to think what will be the solution in both of these cases what do you expect the difference to be remember that in the OLS with ridge we are going to add this lambda into modulus of theta whole square and we are going to minimize this entire uh, objective function whereas without the ridge only the squared loss will be minimized I hope all of you have first of all thought about an answer in your own mind now let us move to python code um, I am going to go through the code step by step so if you don't understand no worry I will be sharing the code file with all of you towards the end and it's pretty simple ok so uh, we are going to do the ridge regression example now uh, and let me show you how I have constructed this problem in Python. First I have imported the packages which is numpy and matplotlib. This is pretty standard now numpy is for scientific computing matplotlib is for plotting. 
now then what i do is uh, i define the number of uh, so i'm creating the data set now so uh, what i do is that uh, i define the x input and then i define the y input so you will see that 10 points here are along a straight line which is divide which is 2 into x input plus a very small amount of random noise so basically uh, don't look at the straight lines right now just look at these blue points so 30 points are there here that's why i have said n equal to 30 and what i have done here is that y is equal to 2x plus small amount of noise so what i am doing here is that initial 30 points so i am i am doing y equal to 2x y equal to 2x and i am doing and i am taking 30 points here and i am adding very very small amount of noise to all of these points so they will lie somewhere along these this line so this is how the first 30 points actually look like if you just look at the blue dots right now the first 30 points look like this they lie away and beyond from the y equal to 2x line and then what i will do is i will add three outliers so here you can see i have added three outliers so x inputs are 15 18 and 20 and their y inputs are 80 90 and 100 this is where the three outliers are see one two and three so the blue dots are my input data clearly when you plot this you will see that this is noise right this does not most of the input data is focused around y equal to 2x line but these three are the noise points they are the outlier points okay so uh now as is done with the ridge regression so first let me compute the ols solution and look i ultimately want to use the formula this formula for the ols w transpose w inverse w transpose t this is the formula which i want to use and uh, in python it's actually written the the same way if you see this inverse of x transpose x which means w transpose w inverse multiplied by w transpose t multiplied by y this is the same thing w transpose w inverse w transpose t multiplied by t so in the code uh, in the code w is just replaced by x and t is just replaced by y so in the code the formula for theta star is x transpose x inverse x transpose y it's as simple as that uh, now first thing which i want you to uh, remember is that uh, you remember the x augmentation which we did uh, the x augmentation was uh, adding the columns of ones so if you had the x1 x2 or x1 y1 let me put x1 x2 as the first data point if the second data point was uh, x3 x4 something like that then the way this is the augmented matrix is constructed is that we first add a column of ones then we write the first data point then we write the second data point this is what this is how w is constructed in this formula so remember that w is the augmented matrix in this formula and we have to append a column of ones we have covered this in detail in the previous lecture so please have a look at it in detail so here you can see what i am doing is we are adding a column of ones here to the x input uh, so if i uh, if i show how the x looks like here let me just type x and show you so you see this is how the x looks like we have added one one year and uh, let me show you how y looks like so this is how the y matrix looks like uh, okay great now let us implement so i am going to delete these two right now okay so the first thing is to find the ols solution which is just x transpose x inverse x transpose y and we have calculated it the second thing is finding the uh, ridge regression uh, uh, formula and if you see the formula it's like x transpose x plus n times lambda i inverse x transpose t so now what you will see in this code is that uh, 
okay now what you will see in this code is that if you see the beta ridge it is uh, x transpose x plus lambda into i see that is what uh, we have also written here plus lambda into i and then we take an inverse uh, and then we take an inverse here so remember that n n lambda is the constant and what we have done here is that uh, the lambda ridge is actually n into lambda in the code so we are choosing it as 1000 right now when i share the code with you you can feel free to vary the lambda and see the results for yourself so this is the formula for beta that's it i just have two formulas in this code i have uh, so let me write these formulas here for your reference so the first formula is x transpose x inverse x transpose y and the second formula is x transpose x plus lambda ridge i and uh, x transpose y inverse so lambda ridge is just n lambda in our previous notation here so i am just doing this and i am written this formula for these two in python right now that's it actually now what i am just going to do is i am going to find the optimal theta star so this is theta star and this is theta star ridge and I'm going to compare it with the actual data. Are you ready for the comparison check? Let us see the comparison. Before that, please have an intuition of what you think the true answer might be. So this is the, so the blue is the true data which you have already seen with these outlier points. And when I say OLS fit, fit OLS fit means the optimal solution, the theta star, which is returned by the formula and that is given by the red line and if you look at the green line that is the fit which is given by the ridge regression with a lambda equal to 1000 first of all i want you to notice that there is a big difference between the red line and the green line the red line seems to deviate towards this noisy data also it seems to want to capture all the data so it's tried so it's tried its best to kind of increase its slope to capture the noise now remember what I said about ridge regression. What ridge regression actually does is it penalizes the slope. So it prevents the slope from becoming too high. That's exactly what happened here. So since the slope cannot become too high, the ridge regression line, which is the green line, remains with a lower slope. So it neglects this noise and it captures only the correct data. Uh, this is the hands-on practical visualization of how ridge regression works and why it works now did you understand why we added this lambda into modulus of theta whole square so let us see the slope in both of the cases and let us see uh, which is higher so i have plotted the so beta ols will give me the slope of the ols which is 4.589 and beta ridge is the slope of the green line which is the slope of the ridge regression and this is almost half of the slope of the beta OLS because since we added this lambda times this term in the ridge regression we prevent the slope from becoming too high and hence we do not capture the noise in the data and I want you to note how this prevents overfitting as well now let's say I give you some test data let me show it to you here uh, here right so this is our training data let's say I give you test data it is very likely to lie somewhere here because that's where most of the data lies correct now my two hypotheses my first hypothesis is this which is without ridge and it would do very badly on the test data because it has captured noise so its slope has become very high but now if you see this which is my width with the ridge regression it will actually do much better on the testing data as well so the first thing which we saw and uh, we have seen this in practice through our python code right now is that ridge regression reduces overfitting it prevents us from capturing the noise And in general, it does better 
on the test data. So this is the first benefit of ridge regression. Now let us look at the second benefit of ridge regression which is what if W transpose W is not invertible in the first place. Okay, now for this I am going to take a two dimensional data set. So we are not going to be in one dimensional anymore. We are going to be in two dimensions and uh, my inputs x1, x2 will look something like this. So let me first also show you the code. Uh, so this is the ridge regression non-invertible. So I am going to have four data points. Uh, I am going to have 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6 and uh, 4, 8. These are my data points. Okay. These are my data points. So the W matrix will look something like this 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3, 6, 1, 4, 8. Okay. And uh, the y values are uh, going to be 5, 9, 13 and 17. Y values are 5, 9, 13 and 17. So the way the hypothesis class will look in this case is beta 1 into x1 plus beta 2 into x2. So the visualization will be in a three dimensional plane. Uh, because the y values are so you can consider that for this x of 1 comma 2 the y value is 5 so it will lie somewhere in a three dimensional plane for 2 comma 4 it's 9 for 3 comma 6 is 13 for 4 comma 8 it's 17 so you can visualize it in three dimensions and uh, the hype so this uh, this line which is our best fit line will be a hyper plane this time it will not be a straight line because it will be fitting in three dimensions. First thing which I want you to note is that this problem of W transpose W not being invertible, it really arises if our features are dependent. Features are dependent. Now what does it mean? As we saw in the case of classification, the features are things which we measure like ear flappiness index or, or whisker length etc. So in this case, the features are x1 and x2. And we clearly see that the features are depending on each other, right? There is a clear relation between these features x2 is equal to 2x1. There is a clear cut relation between the features. Okay, so here we can see, as I mentioned, that the features are clearly dependent on each other. Uh, and as I mentioned, this may happen in real life because when we measure different features, it's very likely that many of them depend on each other. Let us try to now actually calculate the W transpose W inverse in this case. For this particular case, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to neglect theta naught. So I'm not going to use the augmented matrix because then it will lead to a 3 by 3 matrix calculation. For the sake of simplicity, here I'm just going to use X transpose X inverse, X transpose Y, but you can clearly do it for the case of uh, w also okay so my x is 1 2 2 4 3 6 4 8 so let us calculate x transpose x x transpose x will be 1 2 3 4 2 4 6 8 multiplied by 1 2 2 4 3 6 4 8 so then i will have two rows and two columns since this is two rows and four columns, this is four rows and two columns. So for the first row and first column, I'll multiply all and add. So it will be one plus four plus nine plus 16, which will be 30. For the first row and second column, it will be two. It will be two plus eight plus 18 plus 32 which will be 50 plus 8, 58 plus 260. 
for the second row first column it will be 2 plus 8 plus 18 plus 32 which will again be 60 and uh, for the fourth row it will be oh, sorry for the second row second column it will be 4 plus 16 plus 36 plus 64 so this will be 120 so this is my x transpose x now if you remember uh, if i had a matrix a b c d to calculate the inverse it was 1 upon ad divided by bc into some other matrix correct now let us see what ad minus bc is in this case so this is my x transpose x ad minus bc is 3600 0, 0 minus 3600 0, 0, which is equal to 0 that's why this matrix is called not invertible because we have to take a division by 0 in this formula now what do we do here let's say you have a data like this uh, and you want to use this formula but it turns out that when you are calculating this formula there comes a zero in the denominator and the inverse does not exist at all now let us look at ridge regression so the ridge regression what it will do it will do x transpose x inverse x transpose y correct so no sorry the ridge regression will add x transpose x plus lambda i and then it will do inverse x transpose y so if you see x transpose x is still 30 60 60 120 but plus i will now add a lambda into i so it will be lambda lambda 0 0 so then this matrix will now be 30 plus lambda 60 60 and 120 plus lambda now let us calculate this ad minus bc which is the determinant as a rule if ad minus bc is zero which means if the determinant is zero the matrix is non-invertible so if you do ad minus bc here so this will be 150 lambda plus lambda square it will be greater than zero which means it's clearly not equal to zero so if our features are dependent then the normal ols formula does not work normal ols formula does not work but what does work is the ridge regression formula this formula works because it adds a diagonal term it adds a diagonal term here it adds this lambda term here and thus what it effectively does is that it prevents the determinant which is ad minus bc of x transpose x or w transpose w when we consider theta naught and when we do that augmentation it prevents the determinant to be zero and hence it makes the matrix invertible in the first place this is the second problem which is actually solved by uh, ridge regression and I have written a very simple code to demonstrate this. Let me uh, run this code again. So what this code essentially shows is that uh, there are four points which I have, which we already considered 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6 and 4, 8. And their y values are 5, 9, 13 and 17. So if you have to plot these four points in a 3D space, they will look like this. So this is x1, x2 and on the y, which is the z axis right now, we have the y values. So these are the four dots, the four circular dots shown by the four red points. As we see, uh, we cannot use normal regression here. So we are just going to use ridge regression and we use the same formula x transpose x plus lambda i inverse multiplied by x transpose y that's it and then i am going to just plot it so the optimal plane looks something like this and i have just plotted it along the data points and here you can see that all the four points lie on the data which means we are able to capture the data set pretty well using the regression formula if you want to check out the uh, so the formula in two dimensions is beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 right plus beta 2 x2 this is the y 
and we want to find the optimal beta naught beta 1 and beta 2 so this plane which i have plotted here this plane is for the optimal beta 0 beta 1 and beta 2 given by ridge regression formula now if you want to see the magnitude of this beta 0 beta 1 and beta 2 you can just plot the optimal value you can see the numbers and then you can calculate so if so i now know that my true hypothesis which is y is equal to uh, point 0.9 plus point 0.8x1 plus 1.6x2 point 0.9 plus point 0.8x1 plus 1.6x2 so this is just beta 0 beta 1 and beta 2 so what now we can do is that we can take these four points and we can plot the y prediction so this is y prediction we can plot the y prediction and we can compare it with the y actual and y actual was uh, 5 9 13 and 17 5 9 13 and 17 okay so let's see so when we calculate y predicted it is 4.93 8.96 12.99 and 17.02 which is very close to 5 9 13 and 17 which means that the ridge regression has actually given us the correct answer which we also visualized from the plot but this is just a more mathematical way of checking the prediction with the correct answer so this is the second advantage of ridge regression which we saw the first advantage is that ridge regression reduces overfitting and the second advantage is that it solves the non-invertible problem it solves the non-invertible matrix problem by adding lambda i to the diagonals as we saw here by adding lambda to the diagonals and making the matrix itself invertible now what i am going to do is now i am going to have a final section on why is it called ridge regression uh, i am sure many of you are curious to know this uh, and it's not explained very nicely in other courses so i just want to take some time to explain this so why is it called ridge regression the reason is got to do with the second problem which it solved the non-invertible problem uh, the reason lies over there so let's say we have the same case uh, we have the same case where we have uh, x1 and x2 1 comma 2 2 comma 4 and 3 comma 6 let's say these are my inputs and i have some outputs for each point let's say the outputs are 3 5 and 8 this is the y so my x is 1 2 2 4 3 6 and my y is 3 5 8 now you see here the features are dependent on each other which are also called correlated features the features are correlated so x2 is equal to 2x1 in this case now let us investigate what is meant by non-invertible matrix right and how does it really show up so the theta which is our hypothesis will look something like this y is equal to beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 correct and x2 is equal to 2 x1 so y will be beta 1 plus 2 beta 2 into x2 now it turns out that let's say now you have take the loss loss is equal to sigma i goes from 1 to 3 or how many your points we have y minus y i minus beta plus 2 beta 2 x 2 i 
whole square this is what the loss function will look like without the ridge regression and we can actually plot a three dimensional plot between beta 1 beta 2 and the loss let us see what that plot actually looks like so i have a code here called ridge visualization look at this plot of the ols loss surface so this is called as loss surface and this is a plot of beta 1 beta 2 and the loss ideally we want to find the beta 1 and beta 2 which lead to lowest possible loss right so there should be a local minima but if you zoom in closer here this is not a minima but this looks like a ridge the reason it looks like a ridge is that there are a huge number of values for which the value of the loss is exactly the same so if you visualize this from the bottom or if you visualize like this there is a flat surface here it's not like a local minima like not one point where it's minimum it's minimum at a lot of number of points so there are a huge number of points at which the loss function is minimum and that is a big problem because uh, which means that there can be a huge number of beta 1 and beta 2 which might lead to the correct answer right so observe this loss function carefully like i'll also share this plot with you this feature at the bottom it's called as a ridge a ridge is basically a curved surface and a flat bottom this is what it looks like flat bottom and the curved surface so the flat bottom is where the loss function is the same because it's horizontal so we have a low lowest loss function for infinite values of beta 1 and beta 2 um, and that is what why it looks like a ridge and that is a big problem because we won't get a local minima in fact this ridge causes many other problems it means that uh, even if you change beta by huge amount the loss will not change since this this thing is flat in all directions up to infinity and so sometimes we get solutions with very high parameter values because even those will lead to the same amount of loss the reason it's called ridge regression is because if we add the regularization term what the regularization term does is that imagine this is the flat surface this the regularization term lifts the flat surface it lifts it and makes it curved so this is the ols loss surface and this is the loss surface for ridge so if i just add a ridge term you can look at the values here look at the bottom values all of them are stagnating around 50k but now if you see the ridge loss surface the ridge has taken the bottom and put it up top so then all the values are higher than 50k so there is no stagnation line at the bottom there is no stagnation flat surface here you can see the ridge has kind of elevated the bottom see this this is the bottom which is elevated but if you see this th there is a flat flat line at the bottom that is a big problem for us because there are infinite values of beta 1 and beta 2 which lead to the correct answer the reason it's called ridge regression is that ridge helps us get out of adding the ridge loss or the regularization term helps us get out of this ridge and uh, helps us attain a local minima again that's why it's called as a ridge regression so this is the visual explanation for what happens when our features are correlated when our input features are correlated the loss function uh, looks something like this there is a ridge at the bottom and there are infinite values of beta 1 and beta 2 which can lead to the correct answer this means that our potential optimum can have very high values which is not good for us what the regularization term does is that it lifts the ridge and it prevents us from getting these infinite set of correct solutions that's the reason why it's called as ridge regression uh, i'll share all of these three code files with you the ridge visualization OLS ridge regression where we saw how it prevents us from capturing the noise and I will also show uh, share this this code where I showed the input features as dependent on each other and how the ridge regression helps us to find the correct hypothesis in this case okay so this brings us to the end of this lecture we actually saw three things in this lecture the first thing was uh, how ridge, ridge regression helps us to solve two main problems uh, the first problem of overfitting and the second problem of uh, basically inverse 
of W transpose W does not exist, does not exist. Or this can also be written as if features if if features are correlated. And overall, we saw one very crucial thing. We saw why it is called as ridge regression. We visualized, we visualized ridge regression, and we saw that if features are correlated. We get stuck in a ridge. We get stuck in a ridge which looks like so if you plot the loss function as a function of the beta 1 and beta 2, it looks like there are infinite values of beta 1 and beta 2 which lead to the lowest answer because this ridge is a straight line at the bottom. What the ridge regression does is that or adding a regularization is it lifts the ridge up so that we don't get infinite values of beta 1 and beta 2. We don't get very high values of our parameter, etc. Uh, so this brings us to the end of this lecture. As always, I try to keep it as visual as possible while also explaining the fundamental mathematics. So we have now covered ridge regression and uh, in the subsequent lectures, we will cover many other topics. So stay tuned for the next lectures. Thank you.